This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show where we talk about and with people in and around uh, independent professional wrestling uh, here in Pittsburgh, PA at Sorgatron Media Studios. And uh, we got a fun one tonight and I got a little bit of backup to give me a hand here. But first, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You subscribe to this show and many others in the Wrestling Mayhem Show network and also check out IndieWrestling.us where a lot of the indie wrestling including this show lives as well, he is up at goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Uh, let us know any thoughts you have on people that we've had, people you want us to have in the future, or if we have anything announced on our Facebook page uh, that we'll be interviewing, please uh, feel free to drop any questions on any of those avenues as well. And, of course, subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on YouTube and the Facebook page. And I know, Alex... Apple Podcasts. I was having that mistake all night long during a podcast session, and and I kept stopping myself. And and and, and the fifteen people in there were laughing along with me, saying, "That's okay, that's okay." Uh, yeah, you heard the voice over there. Uh, Alex Cars is joining us from Occupy Pro Wrestling. That's not where the screams are coming from, by the way. We'll get to that in just a moment. But Alex Cars is with us uh, of Occupy Pro Wrestling and the Great Shakara in Fifteen Podcast. How are you doing tonight, Alex? I'm doing great. I am super excited for our interview tonight, and I'm really glad that you you invited me along for this ride. Well. I got to bring the expert in when I have somebody from, uh, especially, uh, yes, we hear more screams. Oh, I love this. Uh, the atmosphere tonight, guys. It's that kind of podcast. But you can hear the screams because live from the the Wrestle Factory out there, Chikara Central joining us, it is uh, Pig Daddy Cool, the Boar of Moldova joining us here on the line tonight. Thank you for joining us. Michael and Alex, thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for putting up with the screens in the meantime got to break uh all the new ones in that's right exactly as you do by the way i love the t-shirt there if you guys are on audio that's a sweet pokemon style uh chikara shirt going on over there thank you very much thank you it's not a boar shirt but uh still supporting the cause uh it's i believe it's an old king of trio shirt as well which uh, yep. we've got king of trios coming up uh this year nice uh, over the course of labor day weekend Excellent. Always a good time. I've been to two of those, and definitely recommend if you have the chance. It's a, it, 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 it's, it's a definitely an experience uh, to see one of those. Um, so, so Boar, if I can call you Boar or Mister Boar yes, or Mister or Mister of Moldovia, we've been trying to figure that out here before the show. Um, <laughs> uh, or Pig Daddy Cool. Uh, that, so, that's so fine too. we like to uh, do a little bit of an icebreaker here on the show for people who maybe haven't seen you, haven't you don't know what you're about yet um so what is your first memory of uh pro wrestling oh my first memory of pro wrestling that would have to be uh probably SummerSlam 92 uh i was just a young boy uh but yeah SummerSlam 92 the the uh the event itself the the spectacle that it was uh bret hart is my favorite wrestler growing up uh yeah so SummerSlam 92 the whole event going back and watching it uh, it's still one of those shows I can watch over and over again. So that, that's got to be my first memory. I like that better than uh, Finn Balor with his uh, SummerSlam 95. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh-uh. I don't know. Maybe Different that times. maybe that's just Lego building uh, SummerSlamming. <laughs> I, I, you know, maybe 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 you were more into the wrestling than he was growing up, which is kind of astounding uh, as good as he is these days you know but uh no absolutely so so you were pretty much a a a, a, a fan from a young boar like, kind of straight through right yes absolutely uh i think even mama boar has pictures of me uh before i can even walk i'm just glued in front of a giant tv uh watching wrestling uh so even before i could walk or talk mm-hmm. i was just instantly glued to professional wrestling that's awesome. So was it a thought in your head that you want to get in the ring and do this as a young child? Or is that like, you know, or did that kind of come a little bit later? Absolutely. It was always what I wanted to do. And it's, uh, it's, it's crazy when you hear people say, follow your dreams, your dreams can come true, you can do anything. Uh, 
you know, a lot of times I think people just take that as, as filler, as something good to hear. But that was something I truly believed. It was uh, something I always wanted to do. And, uh, you know, eventually as life went on, I, I tried convincing myself to complete other things first, you know, mm-hmm. finish college education. As a lot of uh, wrestlers even say, you should have the college education in case of injury or something catastrophic happens. But uh, it was just impossible for me to concentrate without having wrestling, without being, uh, being a wrestler, without pursuing that. So everything else is on the back burner. That's great. That's great. So th- were you um, were you were you first introduced to to the Chikara uh, uh, training, or was there another path into where you're at? No, uh, Chikara was where I first started. There was a, a lot of options, and still are a lot of good schools out there. And uh, I was just trying to weigh the pros and cons before I uh, decided to move and take the big jump. And uh, I just looked at the Wrestle Factory, their their track record of turning out great talent, and in turn that talent being part of the show, being part of the event. Uh, and making up the company itself. A lot of places, mm-hmm. you, won't, you won't really see that. You might see one or two stand out a few years at a time, but Chikara, they consistently give opportunities to uh, those who earn it, and I knew if I could just get the, get my foot in the door, I'd be able to earn those opportunities, and uh, it turned out to be the right fit. Absolutely. Was, was there anything you know, outside of the, you know, obviously the, the work ethic in, in the, in the, in the quality of talent, uh, was Chikara as a promotion? Obviously, it's... Uh, uh, something different than you see usually, especially on the independents or even what you kind of grew up with probably in WWE. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, it definitely has its niche audience and uh, it's totally comfortable. It has hundred percent confidence in who and what Shakara is. Uh, it's not, it's not out there trying to pretend to be something it's not or uh, to, to gain some kind of new fan base. If, if you dig it, you'll gravitate towards it. Uh, we attract people, all different uh, races, religions, backgrounds. Uh, it, it's really a welcoming for everybody and, everybody's welcome all ages all shapes all sizes Mm -hmm. uh so yeah that that welcoming atmosphere as well uh really really drew my attention to shikara absolutely Uh, and we know you know shikara you know really big on characters it's it's one of the i think one of the most uh uh, larger than life promotions out there on on this on this level of independent professional wrestling uh and does fantastic um you know was you know how did the the boar as we know it kind of come come to pass uh, you know was was this always like was pig daddy cool always on the on the docket for you uh or did, was there there's other iterations of you before we got to what we see here today no uh i guess i always had larger characteristics i was always the tallest kid even though i wasn't the largest by uh, build i was a tall skinny kid uh but i always had the height going for me and uh i guess just the way i moved in the ring i, I still am not the most graceful athlete uh there's a lot more I can do that I don't showcase in the ring because it's not needed. And, uh, you know, I choose to accentuate other positives, but, uh, you know, you're not, you're not going to see a five-star Matt classic for me. That's just not the type of uh, person or character I am. And that's what makes wrestling beautiful because different people appreciate different things. Yeah. Uh, so if you happen to like, uh, you know, a Dave Batista Hulk Hogan, uh, kind of style, then I'm right up your alley. That's uh, awesome. But, but Pig Daddy cool. Uh, you know, it's, it's something I've grown into. And, of course, there's different wrestlers at different times in my life. I kind of see myself being, you know, uh, I see myself being a, a Bret Hart or a Dolph Ziggler or a Cesaro. And just through different times, you kind of take a little bit from everybody who you've grown up appreciating and you try to steal from them because, you know, they're truly geniuses and they create so well. And uh, you try to blend that all together into this beautiful puzzle that makes up you. That's awesome. Um, like I said, I, I, we were talking a little bit about the last time I got to experience some Chikara in person um, a couple of years ago for King of Trios. And uh, speaking of people that you probably grew up on, um, you had an encounter with uh, D-Generation X at that King of Trios. And of course, this was my first introdu- introduction to you. Uh, you know, it was like it was like you know, kind of fun. I mean, two days of getting to know you know, Pig Daddy Cool, and uh, and I'm sorry, I forget, don't recall the name of your partner, but he, he resembled a certain uh, X Pac a little bit. He did. So. He did. That was a uh, Frakish Sabar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, tell me a little bit about that experience because you guys uh, got to confront uh, the, the the actual X Pac and of course Billy Gunn uh, at the end of that weekend. Absolutely. That was uh, something that was kind of a lifetime building up. Uh, a little known fact, a small young boar made the trip from Moldova over to Virginia as a child. And I was actually at the Monday Night Raw where DX invaded Nitro just about 35 minutes down the road. So uh, 
Uh, even as a young, young boar, I got to see D-Generation G- X on the tank uh, moving towards the Norfolk scope. And I thought, that is, that is amazing. I can't believe they're going to do that. I got to see some of the promo and everything from the parking lot. Uh, so that was a long time coming. And so Billy Gunn, X-Pac, absolute tremendous talents, uh, all-time greats in, the, in uh, the, the professional wrestling business. And uh, to be able to have a run-in with them, I kind of thought I was grown. Uh, maybe if you've ever challenged your dad or any other uh, figure in your life when you're 13, 14, 15 years old, you kind of think you're grown and then you find out you're not yet. So that's what that experience was like for me. Uh, Billy Gunn is a massive human being, uh, unlike anybody else I've ever met. And uh, a lot of people think X-Pac is also a, a small person, but he is not small by any standards. Uh, he's also a large man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you get in there with the big boys, people who've uh, done some things in this business, and uh, you will, uh, you'll pay the price and you will quickly adjust or uh, go down quickly in defeat, as we did. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've done had a couple opportunities to work alongside Billy Gunn for some shows. Oh, some more screaming in the background. <laughs> <laughs> this so is someone. Someone's getting um, initiated. Someone. Someone's uh, breaking in. You know, to say a, someone's getting stretched. <laughs> You know, usually this would be a little weird, but this is just perfect for uh, talking with somebody from Chikara, I think. But there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex, yeah. of course, Alex, I know you got your finger on the pulse of Chikara a bit more with what you're doing over there at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Um, I want to make sure you get a couple questions in on this, too. All right, sure. It's time to get into the nitty gritty. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I'm just um, So a lot of us Chikara fans know you kind of started out as part of the block party. Uh, yes. with the likes of the Polar Baron, uh, Sicklemeyer, and Brown Morning of Belarus, and Mr. Mm-hmm. Azerbaijan, along with yes. Prakash Tabar. So I was just kind of curious, first of all, like what was what was it like working with those guys at the beginning? It was really cool. Uh, of course, Shakar is another company that's really known for uh, their stables and their groups a lot of times. Uh, so that was really cool to break into, especially just starting out. Uh, it's really hard to go out there 100% on your own. So to be able to ease my way in there and to be the big bad boar, uh, you know, come in, do a lot of damage, a lot of power moves, and then tag out, save a lot of energy, uh, you know, limit some of my exposure in the ring before I was able to make some mistakes and uh, also be able to learn on the fly. Just tremendous opportunity, and uh, I'm glad for that experience, both in a stable and uh, being part of a tag team as well. Nice, nice. And just out of curiosity, have you heard from or spoken to Sicklemeyer or Brown Morning since they've kind of disappeared or I, I have not you know with uh internet being what it is and being so patchy sometimes some countries it's great some countries it's not so good uh just have not been able to keep up with those guys so if they happen to come back around be happy to see them you know maybe have a family barbecue or something uh, <laughs> for sure yeah. for sure well cool. i i asked about them specifically because uh i know prakash had tweeted out that he'd finally been allowed back into pakistan so yes. is uh Time as a wrestler, at least for now, is over because he's back yes. home from Pakistan. So best of luck to him with everything. But, uh, yeah, just kind of curious about that. But, uh, yeah, so I, I did want to ask because at some point we went from having the proletariat boar of Moldova to the rumblings of Pig Daddy Cool. And I was kind of curious yes. about how that kind of transitioned about and, like, what was that like for you? Uh, it's, it's just it's just a continual evolution. Uh, evolution, excuse me. Uh, you don't ever want to become stale or stagnant. Uh, you always want to be moving forward and coming up with something new and fresh. Uh, so proletariat still fits me very well. I still put my nose down to the, the ground and do a lot of hard work and put in a lot of sweat and uh, you know just just try my best to succeed. But along with that comes some progress. And with that progress, uh, I put on some size. I put on some weight. Put on some extra muscle. I didn't know uh, I'd be able to have. And uh, with that, Pig Daddy Cool, it's, it's more than just appearance. It's also an attitude. Uh, it's something I bring to the ring. Uh, you know, I'm one of the biggest guys in Chikara. And so I'm, I'm Pig Daddy Cool. You, you know, when I step through the curtain, there's no one else like it. Uh, six and a half feet of a uh, 265-pound boar mm-hmm. coming at you. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that kind of intimidating frame of yours is why uh, Juan Francisco was so interested in having you and... Uh, the other guys uh, from the block party joined him in the United Nations. Absolutely. Uh, that was, I'll say that was a really cool time. Well, I mean, I was really was. Curious what it was like for you. That was one of my favorite times in my career so far, uh, even though it's not that long. Uh, that time I was able to spend with Juan Francisco, and of course the rest of the block party, but uh, you know, I guess I'll uh, 
foot over Juan Francisco de Coronado. Uh, he is, he is the <laughs> grand champion of Shakara. Uh, he's a grand champion for a reason. Uh, he's, a, he's a tremendous trainer at the Russell Factory. Uh, he has a really great mind uh, for what goes on inside and outside of the ring. And to be able to sit with him and, you know, at a time he was one of my best friends and to be able to travel the road uh, all across North, Amer uh, North America and at, uh, the East Coast, up and down the road with him, uh, you know, getting food, going to the gym, uh, putting miles on the car and uh, emptying out the bank account, making it to town to town was, uh, you know, so something I may never experience again with a, a friend that close. But the experience I gained, uh, tremendous. And it made me, it, it did make me who I am now. Very nice. Very nice. And then, of course, you know, after Juan decided that he had had enough of you guys, unfortunately, uh, broke up the United Nations. I believe this was shortly before King of Trios last year. Or it was uh, right at King of Trios 2016. Right, right. That's right. Yes. Which is actually, if I remember correctly, the event from which that shirt's kind of based around because they uh, yes. had the Pokemon theme that year. Yes. Um, so, yeah, at, sometime after that, you kind of. Uh, pursued uh, more of a solo career. Uh, we didn't really see you around a whole lot, but when we did see you, it was always a good time. Yeah, uh, you know, Juan Francisco did decide to break up uh, the United Nations, which was uh, it was a tough transition because I saw I saw us helping him. Uh, you know, very similar to maybe you think uh, Evolution or a Horseman. You know, he was the clear leader. There was no debate about that. There was never any arguments about that. We wanted to help him succeed. I knew that wasn't a point in my career where I was ready for the grand championship. It was all about getting him to where he needed to go. And uh, he decided the best thing for him was to go solo. And it's, it's hard to argue with that because shortly after that, uh, he became the grand champion of Shakar. And it took me a while to find my feet. Uh, you know, I wasn't exactly ready uh, to be a, a solo act, to be a, a singles competitor. I uh, had pretty good success in a tag team. I felt very comfortable being in a tag team. But it was time to move on. And... Uh, you know, either you hit the ground running or you get left behind and almost got left behind. And it was a, it was a humbling time. I decided I need to put in a lot more work uh, at the Wrestle Factory, a lot more work in the gym. And uh, it, it's paying off right now. It certainly has. It certainly has. And that kind of is catching us up a little bit with more recent events. Uh, we've seen you start to team up with Oleg the Usurper as the Beast Warriors. Yes. And that's been a lot of fun. Kind of curious how, uh, just for those of us that maybe aren't, haven't quite caught all the stuff going on. How did that come about? Uh, we had similar I mean, enemies. Uh, we were both left behind by uh, factions and, and stables, if you want to use that term. Uh, we were both abandoned, uh, you know, me with the United Nations and, uh, you know, Sidney Bacabella's Devastation Corporation kind of left him behind. And uh, we were both left to, to figure it out on our own. And we both have, had some success, but we kept hitting this glass ceiling that we could never break through. Uh, you know, I took Juan Francisco de Coronado to the limit in Connecticut for the Grand Championship of Shakar, and you know, I, was, I was seconds away from obtaining that goal, and as was he uh, on two different occasions. And just whether it's, it's cheating, it's outside interference, it's other people, uh, we decided to join forces and, and combine and really set our sights on the, uh, the, the Campeonatos de Parejas here in Shakar. Uh, neither one of us have been champions yet in our career, so that's a, it's a big goal that we have. To join together. Awesome. How sure. is the? Uh, I, I was seeing a tweet here uh, going through about uh, you, you. You might have had a collar bone injury a few days ago. How's that healing up for you? Oh, it's healing up okay. Of course, there's uh, there's always injuries that happen, whether inside the ring or outside the ring. Uh, I was just doing a uh, a power clean, and I didn't know my own strength, and so I lifted the bar up a little too high. When I got underneath it, it landed on my collarbone, and it's hard to tell now, but uh, it was it was a pretty good cut. It just sliced right open uh on the skin so it, it's healing up okay uh, i gotta i gotta i feel like this is a theme with chikara so i i gotta see if you got an answer to this uh last, last, last few times that i've been around for uh chikara uh, uh events uh you guys are pretty big into uh, uh video games it seems uh no mercy tournament at the last king of trios i was at uh as well as uh seeing uh chuck taylor and the crew go to town on what i think is a uh, virtual pro wrestling um, are you an N64 wrestling nut, and how are you with the game? I'm pretty good at the, the N64 wrestling. I'm not, I'm not as good as some people out there. It's been a while, and I don't stay sharp on my skills. Uh, I might pick up the old joysticks uh, you know, once a year or so for No Mercy, or uh, especially Revenge was a, a big favorite of mine. Uh, but I, I can handle my own. I can do okay. 
Good, good. I think the th- I, st- I think I still have a standing feud with the Thunder Frog from when he beat me in the tournament. But uh, <laughs> he, he is pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to come back for that some year uh, here at the trios tournaments, uh, for sure. So awesome. Get that win. Get that win back. Get that win back. Seriously. I mean, I think. Jeez, I, I think people were p- picking Earl Hebner or something. It was just like, what's going on at this <laughs> thing? Also, impressed that everybody was unlocked in No Mercy. I don't have near the, the, the unlocks that they have because I, I grabbed a late copy of it. But uh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so uh this far into like where things are going shikara of course shikara is a, a you know you got king of trios coming up um were you a part of well there's something that happened actually speaking of speaking king of trios last year um it went to um uh england uh were you yes. a part of that and how was that experience I, I was not part of that uh again i was during that time in my career where oh that's right uh, okay I, I, I was i wasn't around a ton so it was part of that humbling process uh you know, but not being able to to make the trip, and you know, my my services not being required, um, but being able to see other people go out there and perform and, and keep up with what was going on, and uh, you know, all the fun that the crowd had was was really cool to see. That's awesome. So you know, we talked about a little bit of the past, but what are you watching these days that's kind of inspiring to you? Um, like, is there is there you know other you know other people in Chikara, anybody else, any other specific wrestlers or any product out there that you kind of uh, kind of has your attention these days? Sure. Uh, I, I love keeping up with uh, the current mainstream WWE product. Uh, you know, some wrestlers are afraid to say that, or you know, maybe the product's mm-hmm. not for them. But I always try to enjoy wrestling, uh, specifically WWE, uh, as it is, and you know, whatever time frame it is. There's always, to me, there's always something to find from from everything. Uh, but you know, WWE is what I grew up on, and it's still it's still what I watch a lot. I'm I'm, I'm still a fan of many regards. I still watch Monday Night Raw when I come home from the gym. You know, DVR. It's uh, same with. Tuesday night SmackDown and, and all the pay-per-views and I'm not going to be one to complain about six hours of uh, free WrestleMania. Uh, you know, you can, you can give me 12 hours straight and I'll be there for every minute of it. Uh, but current product I love keeping up on also, you know, what I grew up on, uh, early nineties, late eighties, uh, WWE is, uh, something I also love WCW as well. Uh, yeah, you know, my, my, my tastes are pretty much mainstream throughout the eighties and nineties and, uh, into the two thousands. That's awesome. Uh, that's good to see. Also, if you're free on Monday nights, I'd love to have you on the wrap up because I need somebody that's pro raw with me. Oh, that'd be great. I, I, I've been trying to push this idea of like, listen, I watched New Japan last night. I watched a 45 minute insane match between David Starr and Gresham. We filmed on a Saturday night. I was like, I'm going to sit back on raw and I'm going to enjoy raw for being raw. Right. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to at this point. Yes. Uh, you know, Something a lot of people don't take into consideration is you, you can go to an amazing independent show or independent wrestling events, and uh, you know they they can they can go all out to and and leave everything out there as they should. Uh, but on the flip side of that, a lot of times we don't have to turn around and we don't have to have a show on uh, the next night, or we don't have a town to make or a flight to catch, uh, yeah. you know, and, and and get to the next town. And you know, over the course of a weekend, maybe, but it, it's not something we're making 300 days a year. At least not most of us. Uh, you know, of course, there's that you know top 10 percent of guys who are out there, and you know they're in high demand and making every town and wrestling Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and and that's tremendous, and that's a goal that a lot of people have and should have. Um, but for most of us, you know, we don't we don't have to to worry about what comes next. You know, we get a week or two in between. Uh, so it's just just having a different point of view uh, to enjoying uh, the mainstream stuff. Go along with that, uh, Justin uh, Donahue's out there in the chat room, and he asked. Um... Well, first of all, he says, let's shave the boar, smiley face. Uh, no. I don't, don't know about that. <laughs> but um, uh, Justin's asking, uh, what is boar's favorite style of wrestling to work? My favorite style? Is, I, I heard somebody once say American Strong, American strong Style. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what that is, especially since I'm uh, from Moldova. But, uh, you know, I love, I love just getting in the ring, power slams, power moves, big moves, contact. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, see the sweat flying, uh, make, make it all count. Uh, you know, that's my style. How would you define Moldovan, Mo- Moldovian strong style? Uh, just getting right after it. There's no feeling out process. I don't, I don't believe in the feeling out process. My feeling out process is, uh, knowing how much weight you've got, uh, when I've got you up in the air for a power slam or, uh, some other kind of spine buster or something like that. Uh, you know, not, not into the chain wrestling, the feeling out, uh, rolling around, circling up. That's just not something you're going to see me do. That's awesome. Uh, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far in your career? 
the best thing has got to be able to uh, be able to make make towns and make make uh, make memories with your buddies. Uh, it, it's very hard to make friends and uh, to keep friends inside of wrestling. Uh, but to to have that bond that we all connect over and to go out there and you know to to inflict some serious damage on each other and then uh, you know to have to see somebody later that night or over at the merchandise table and let bygones be bygones for the time being. Uh, that's probably my, my favorite thing. And also the closeness of uh, the intimacy of the fans, being able to shake everybody's hand that comes to a show, or being able to fist bump everybody on their way out of a Shakara event. Uh, it's, it's one of the true highlights for me. Uh, just that personal touch that we can give uh, that you may not be able to experience at a larger show. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Alex, I, 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 Alex uh, tells me he wants to bring back, this is a question we used to ask on this show ages ago. Uh, but he wants to bring it back for, for, for the board tonight. Uh, go ahead, Alex. Boro Moldova, I have a very important question for you. All right. If you are any kind of vegetable, what kind of vegetable would you be and why? Do potatoes count as vegetables? I have this debate all the time. Yes. Potatoes are vegetables. I can allow it, yes. For this, yes. Okay. The starch, but uh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big old potato. Big old potato. What you see is what you get. And who doesn't like potatoes? If they, you know, there's some people out there, potatoes aren't for them. But the large majority, yeah, they love potatoes. That, that, that's, that's I, good I, I can appreciate that. That's a good answer. I like that. I like that. You know, that makes me almost want to bring that question back. Uh, <laughs> you should do it. Awesome. Bora Moldova, where can people uh, find more of you online or in general? Uh, if you go to shakarapro.com, you can see me there. I have a, a sweet profile. It has every event I've been on in the history of Shakara. There's a really cool layout. It has uh, YouTube links to matches and, and interviews. Uh, also, if you stop by uh, the Shakara special, uh, they have some tremendous stuff out there as well. I mean, some great recaps and uh, uh, match re uh, reviews and results as well. And Shakara Topia is a big place where you can find myself and a lot of the stars of Shakara. Uh, a lot of our events are streamed there live or on demand as well. You can go to shakaratopia.com for all of that. And oftentimes we have different uh, different specials going on where you can get a, a, a month free. So follow Shakar Pro on Twitter and uh, keep up with that. Also shakaratopia.com. And you can catch me at Boar is War on the Twitter machine. That's awesome. Low key, I have, I have one of the best Twitter handles. I don't think I got enough love for that. But <laughs> Boar is War on the Twitter. No, I, and thank you. If somebody shared a tweet. You were just like, it was something along the lines of, uh, I just want to talk wrestling with people that aren't a-holes or something. Uh, and, and I couldn't believe it when it was Boris War uh, for the tweet. So I'm glad that that connection and, and that was shared with me a few weeks ago here and we could get this together. Thank you for the opportunity. Again, I love talking wrestling. I'll talk any kind of wrestling with anybody, current, modern, uh, old school stuff. I love wrestling and uh, to be able to talk about it in a positive way and be able to let you know what, what uh, Shakar is doing is fantastic. And I really appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks a lot. And of course, Alex Cars is a uh, look up the Shakar in 15 podcast as well as uh, over at Occupy Pro Wrestling dot com you guys are uh, supporting us uh with a uh, uh, you know getting these shows out there as well. Uh, thank you, Alex, all the way out there in Long Beach, California and joining us. Thanks for having me, Sorg. All right. Ooh. Really happy to be here. <laughs> and of course, check out everything going on um, uh, over at IndieWrestling.us, including past interviews like this and so much more, as well as over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Again, hit us up if you uh, have anybody you think we should be talking about or two on this show uh, over at those uh, uh, hookups at Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WS0 or at Mayhem Show on the Twitter as well. <laughs> Cocktail ball was set, never said I was a gangster or a thug But I'm an animal, eating for the taste of the four Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down Act wild, steady sip of Jack This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com